we are going to talk about uh, infra, what is an infrastructure code and uh, how terraform is useful to uh, let me implement infra infrastructure as a code so i think krithik has pretty much covered my introduction like uh, uh, i am sarunan ganagiri working as a solution architect uh, at infra cloud technologies so yeah predominantly like you know i work as a, a devops architect and uh, like you know uh, working on various uh, cloud native uh, initiatives in the company and uh, i am also an aws community builder and uh, i would love to give back to the community via my technical blogs and uh, i also provide right answers to related to all, all devops and uh, the go related uh, uh, questions in stack overflow as well and i also have my github uh, in which i kind of uh, provide a like you know, workable poc solution related to uh, interface code and uh, devops areas and uh, i am on linkedin uh, twitter github uh, as well as uh, my, i have my profile in dev.to as well in which i write technical blogs and i also ha have my website in which i publish my uh, like my work and uh, everything is available there so this ppt should be available at the end of the session i believe so let's move on to the uh, uh, like uh, the discussion part of it uh, about infrastructure code and uh, terraform so today this is the agenda uh, kind of high level agenda like that i am planning to cover we will go to go through about uh, iac overview and terraform introduction and then we will discuss about uh, various terraform concepts and terminologies and then we will uh, kind of uh, jump on to the hands on part of uh, how to create uh, aws resource creation using uh, terraform and then we'll kind of have a small discussion about like uh, terraform best practices and we'll conclude and then we'll have a q and a session actually so this is the agenda for today so uh, when it, uh, yeah so let's start then so basically like uh, first we'll talk about uh, uh, what is infrastructure code uh, basically so infrastructure as a code is basically as a term uh, uh, like no mentions uh, it is like no defining a infrastructure uh, using a coding format okay so so basically like why we go for infra infrastructure as a code is in uh, traditional days like no every infrastructure has been created manually for creating a simple uh, like no server itself it, it was taking a weeks time to like no go through all the approvals and stuff and uh, it was taking a longer time for a, for deploying a single infrastructure right so that's when this kind of infra infra as a code uh, tools uh, came into picture to define the entire infrastructure uh, with uh, all the network connectivities and uh, Uh, system configuration uh, and uh, like no uh, as a code coding format and uh, it can be deployed uh, into uh, whether uh, like no on a cloud provider or uh, on an on premises service uh, server uh, on prem services to uh, uh, create infrastructure basically uh, so uh, so basically like uh, uh, so so using this infrastructure code uh, it will helps to uh, fix any configuration drift also in, in case if it is happening so Uh, if you are running a server in the sense if someone uh, accidentally deleted any uh, kind of configuration the sense that server may go down so using infra uh, we can make the configuration uh, like no be in the desired state always actually so that uh, that configuration drift also can be resolved and uh, there are many infrastructure infrastructure as a code tools available uh, uh, now in uh, devops space uh, and uh, like no sre side actually so some of the uh, tools i mentioned here those are all like terraform ansible chef aws cloud formation uh, azure uh, and uh, gcp cloud deployment manager and the similar kind of tools basically and there are also like now uh, programming based infrastructure code also becoming famous like you know uh, 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 terraform cdk and aws cdk lumi and all Uh, so these are all some of the basic uh, about infrastructure code and when it comes to infrastructure code uh, there are two types we can split them actually uh, one is mutable infrastructure as a code uh, technologies and other one is immutable so basically the major difference for mutable and immutable is uh, something like you uh, know in mutable uh, infrastructure that infrastructure will be uh, considered as a pets basically pets in the sense like you know if, if if in case i was talking about a configuration drift in one server or you know, you know few few number of server uh, when it uh, when that particular agent based uh, infrastructure code runs on the particular uh, uh, instances or uh, virtual machines that the configuration drift that that was missed in the previous like you know, it was uh, it was deleted or something can be fixed actually okay so that's the kind of uh, mutable infrastructure uh, that uh, ansible and chef can be used to to implement such uh, uh, implementation 
and immutable is something like you no know, uh, that infrastructure can be uh, uh, like you no know, uh, considered as uh, cattle basically like you no know, uh, if 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 there is one issue with uh, uh, some uh, some configuration drift happens this is we cannot fix that particular uh, system alone so we have to redeploy the entire infrastructure and uh, so terraform and the aws cloud formation or such a kind of infrastructure uh, immutable infrastructure code uh, technology examples actually so this is the this is uh, uh, somehow a high level about uh, infrastructure code uh, as an overview and uh, uh, in this uh, uh, infrastructure code like you no know, uh, terraform is uh, kind of uh, one of the uh, uh, like you know, very famous uh, infrastructure code technology in which uh, it has support for many cloud providers and uh, on premises uh, uh, providers basically and it's kind of widely widely adapted uh, infrastructure code technology now <clears throat> and uh, we'll we'll see about a uh, bit about uh, terraform as an introduction so uh, terraform has been created by uh, company called hashi corp and they have uh, multiple uh, like you know, other products as well like vagrant uh, console or similar uh, to other uh, in, uh, to, uh, technologies and uh, uh, like you no know, uh, products as well they have uh, and as i mentioned earlier terraform supports many uh, uh, cloud providers uh, aws azure ibm cloud google cloud distillation and then on prem side they also support vmware uh, kind of uh, providers basically and uh, terraform manages the external resources whatever the cloud provider on and on prem provider we are talking about right using the uh, tech, uh, uh, technology like you know, using the implementation called providers basically like you no know, uh, terraform maintains uh, terraform uh, has a wider community support and uh, it also uh, have a, a like you no know, library of uh, uh, functionalities for their uh, for supporting their infrastructure resources basically so they are that is called uh, providers uh, and uh, so ashikart maintains an extensive list of such official providers and uh, can also integrate with the community developer providers actually so in case such uh, for in some cases if there are some provider is not there and uh, if that uh, if that particular instance or resources can be created via an uh, uh, api call right then we can also like you no know, or anyone uh, can also develop that uh, community uh, based provider and it is called kind of custom development of terraform actually like but that is a kind of bit advanced topic and it's a kind of out of scope for this session session basically so yeah this is a, this is high level and as i mentioned earlier like this is an uh, one of the extensively used uh, infrastructure code tool and uh, in the, the uh, devops automation space actually so that is the introduction of uh, terraform so now let's move on to the uh, uh, basic concepts of uh, terraform like you know how terraform works and uh, so so basically like one uh, uh, like you no know, take away from this session could be uh, for anyone who is starting to learn terraform or like you no know, starting to wanted to uh, build infrastructure using terraform uh, by using this session or by at the end of the session they would be able to create the infrastructure Uh, at least in the aws provider so that is a kind of uh, like a high level uh, like a take away from this uh, session and it will be a very basic beginner session and will not cover any advanced concepts basically uh, so so like no uh, let's uh, dive into like uh, terraform concepts uh, so like uh, let's see like how terraform works uh, so so terraform in terraform uh, we we have like no uh, we would be defining the infrastructure using the hashicorp uh, language and uh, uh, it will be having the uh, respective provider calls to uh, create infrastructure uh, resources in the uh, respective provider so uh, how, uh, how it is internally working is like you now for each cloud provider for example in aws aws have uh, sdks and api for accessing uh, or managing their uh, cloud resources internally and uh, that target api would be uh, like you know, implemented using terraform provider that is kind of developed using golang actually and whenever that particular uh, functionality of uh, 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 running the creation of resources running on a specific provider it will be interacting with the provider api and it will, it will be creating the resource uh, actually and uh, so so basically like terraform consists of three stages first we will be de- like you know designing the infrastructure and then writing it uh, as a, a code and then we will be doing a plan of like you know how that infrastructure indicative infrastructure going to be in the respective cloud provider 
and then once if you are it will show like you no know, anyway like the i'll be showing some examples of all this like you no know, how to write and how to do plan and apply and all and once after that plan if you are kind of satisfied then we can move on to uh, uh, like you no know, apply that particular infrastructure onto the cloud provider and uh, basically like terraform has a extensive support uh, for uh, like you no know, uh, community and it is also having a detailed documentation for everything so in this uh, each slide actually i have provided uh, links for each of the documentation references so anyone wants to deep dive on the uh, terraform concept they can just uh, do uh, like no they can just uh, access this link and uh, they can uh, read through all of this uh, like no in detail actually uh, that that is a, a very con basic concept of how terraform works basically like it is underlying layer it is interacting with the respective cloud providers api to uh, manage their resources actually so that's the high level idea for this uh, slide and uh, terraform has a uh, executable uh, called uh, that executable name itself is terraform and uh, we call it as a cli actually uh, terraform cli and uh, terraform using the terraform cli only we would be uh, kind of uh, 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 kind of uh, it it, it it is basically providing a various commands to um, manage our infrastructure and some of the commands uh, i have provided in this uh, slide basically like you no know, it is having a command like terraform init in which uh, whenever we are doing the terraform init uh, after creating a, a hcl code for a particular resource definition we would be running the init command so it will be interacting with the cloud uh, it will be looking for the what are the providers defined in the terraform for file and it will be uh like you know, sending a uh, downloading them into the uh, user's local location and then validate command is something like a syntax checking of uh, like you no know, terraform code whatever we have written and uh, it there is also another command called uh, terraform fmt like go fmt command that would be kind of uh, doing a formatting of the terraform code whatever we have written and then once it is been confirmed we can do a terraform plan in which as i already mentioned uh, yeah, it would be showing an indicative uh, uh infrastructure whatever we are going to create onto the uh, respective uh, provider basically and it will also show how uh, what are all the changes that is going to make whether it is going to add or it is going to change or it is going to destroy the uh, resources uh, as per the definition and then uh, the apply command comes uh, like you no know, once after we, uh, we are fine with applying that infrastructure onto the uh, cloud provider Uh, we can also uh, do the apply we can do the apply command so that that infrastructure will be deployed and then once after like you no know, everything is done like you no know, uh, destroy command is something like if you wanted to destroy the entire infrastructure that that is defined in the particular uh, terraform code actually so that we can use uh, the terraform destroy command actually and uh, using this uh, terraform uh, sub command and uh, help option we can also explore uh, like you no know, command in uh, Hell, uh, like no options for each of these uh, particular resources, and then uh, we can, uh, like no, uh, we can we can come to know like about uh, more about the, each of these uh, uh, commands actually. So I'll move on to the next slide. Yeah. So as I mentioned, like Hashicorp language is the one in which we will we will be defining our infrastructure, and it will it will be having various blocks actually. Uh, we will also discuss in detail like what all the blocks actually. one such example is given here uh, basically like it will be resources a, resources a block it will be starting with a block type in this case uh, resource uh, block has a aws vpc we are going to uh, create so the resource name defined in uh, the, like no hashicorp module is basically it's called aws vpc and this is the uh, like no identifier for the particular uh, vpc component within the uh, terraform code actually so this app app vpc name would not be the name that would be created in terraform but it would be the internal uh, like you no know, representation of particular resource name uh, that we can say actually and then inside that we we would be having various argument references in which the terraform has implemented the uh, aws implementation uh, like you no know, exactly the same implementation of what were required uh, um, arguments and what are the optional arguments so according to our need we need to define that argument references and uh, we can also add tags actually for the particular resources so that it can be easily identified uh, as a group of tags in the aws actually so this is about like you no know, high level uh, like you know, uh, defining a hashicorp language for uh, defining a terraform code 
and as i mentioned like you know i have also provided a document reference so whoever wants to, wanted to go through about uh, uh, this deep dive on this code they can uh, go through that since this session is more on a hands on part i'd be kind of uh, running through this high level concept actually so so these are all the basic uh, uh, like you no know, components of uh, terraform or like you no know, terminologies basically so uh, as i mentioned that like you not know, uh, in terraform we would be defining the resources the resources is nothing but as the name uh, represent right so the resources are the uh, component of the pro cloud provider or on prem pro provider in which it would be a instance uh, a uh, virtual machine instance or like you no know, uh, in uh, uh, gcp it would be a computing instance something like that right so that would be the thing and the networking components also called like you know, whatever that would be created in the cloud provider or like you no know, on prem provider is called the resources and the provider name is the as i mentioned like you no know, provider is the one that would be the cloud provider or on premises provider uh, that that is kind of implement uh, implementing the underlying uh, resource management apis uh, so that it can be Uh, written in the uh, terraform core and it can be like you no know, uh, used for deploying that particular uh, resources on the provider and module is something like you no know, we it's a kind of modularizing uh, to avoid the code redundancy of such uh, resources basically so for example if we wanted to uh, define a ec2 infrastructure in aws we can define a module for ec2 infrastructure and that module can be reused multiple times for creating uh, like you no know, environment based uh, infrastructure like you no know, uh, or by pa by uh, passing the different variables to the same uh, code so that uh, the code redundancy won't be there so that's what uh, we have kind of uh, like you no know, explaining this one in the module and the provisioners are something like you no know, in each uh, cloud uh, provider uh, they would be providing a facility to run some initial uh, commands whenever the vm is getting created right so Uh, basically in aws it's called user data and uh, in um, uh, uh, in gcp it's called metadata and azure also it's called user data so in uh, in provisioner we can define such kind of user data so that uh, whenever that vm gets created we can provide some basic commands uh, uh, to uh, basically uh, execute that can be executed whenever the vm is gets ready after that it is getting spinned up actually in the provider so this 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 kind of provider section can be useful to install some basic packages that needed to be uh, available whenever the vm is getting uh, uh, whenever it is uh, like you no know, accessible right so we can use this uh, provisioner for that and terraform has various uh, variable uh, like implementation so input variable is something like you no know, kind of global variable we can declare uh, in which we can uh, like you no know, pass a, pass the default value and the default value whatever is defined in that uh, input variable that can be overridden by the uh, file called tfars file so as i mentioned earlier like no uh, if you are having a module and if you wanted to override uh, override the values uh, that was uh, defined in the variable section we can uh, pass the tfars uh, uh, file for the particular infrastructure to pass our uh, like no values according to our need actually and the output section is the one in which like no after the vm is getting spinned up or like no whatever infrastructure uh, resources getting spinned up right for example if you wanted to print the s3 bucket domain name and all that would be known after only applying the infrastructure onto the uh, aws so we can print that value so that we can e immediately access that particular uh, aws bucket whenever that infrastructure is uh, uh, like no completely creating and uh, similarly we also have a uh, local values in which uh, uh, that scope of the value will be available only inside that particular uh, terraform file and uh, we can uh, use this uh, file uh, local values to define some of the intermediate uh, values that is needed for creating our infrastructure so these are all some of the basic concepts resources provider modules provisioners and terraform uh, variables actually so next is some of the important concepts in uh, terraform we have uh, they are actually a terraform state file and a terraform dependency log file uh, so whenever uh, we are uh, like no uh, creating a plan right so uh, or applying that uh, particular uh, uh, infrastructure right it will be creating a terraform state file 
uh, in which it would be updating the uh, uh, infrastructure resource names and uh, IDs and uh, secrets, everything that would be stored in the Terraform state. So this state file would be uh, used to um, uh, know what is infrastructure that gets created in the provider, basically. So uh, so if, so this is one of the key component of uh, infrastructure uh, in Terraform. So that uh, it needs to be uh, like no, not exposed to, in, uh, to the outer world because it has uh, user sensitive data in it actually. And uh, whenever we are doing it, that Terraform destroy or Terraform plan, whenever uh, there is a change, right? So that change is also getting tracked inside the Terraform state file. So uh, so whenever we are destroying uh, some uh, like no, infrastructure, it will be looking for a Terraform state file, and uh, and it will be uh, like no. Uh, changing or destroying the infrastructure according to the state actually and the dependency lock is something like a, a, a version constraint file in which uh, we would be defining the provider where uh, we have a provider block definition right so the provider block we have a version tagging for uh, for the providers and the terraform versioning and all and uh, what uh, terraform lock file will contain is basically it will contain the uh, basic uh, like you know, ver version locking of the provider um, uh, files uh, or whatever all the providers defend in that uh, Terraform file, so that uh, uh, if 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 if, uh, if we wanted to, uh, if, if this is basically not to change the infrastructure, uh, sorry, not to uh, like no uh, vary the provider version whenever the same code gets deployed in the other places, right? So that's why like no, we need we, it, it is also important to uh, like no check in this file as part of our uh, source control so that. Uh, Provider locking will be also be tracked actually in the uh, source control. So basically, yeah. So this is about uh, high level about uh, uh, like you no know, Terraform uh, uh, infrastructure components, uh, and uh, so this is highly about uh, the Terraform concepts and uh, uh, terminologies of uh, Terraform. And uh, now let's uh, try to uh, deep dive into the demo part of uh, Terraform basically, uh, in which. Uh, I'm going to cover like you know, how to install Terraform and uh, how to configure AWS uh, credentials. And uh, I'll also help you guys to uh, create some infrastructure for a beginner level, right? So that's what uh, I'm planning to do now. So basically, for this uh, workshop, actually, I have uh, created a uh, folder and uh, let me check in all the module files there. Uh, so basically, we can just go through about uh, installing uh, Terraform, like uh, those kind of steps here. So as I mentioned, like you no, know, for uh, basic components of uh, Terraform is something like you no know, for any cloud provider if you wanted to create infrastructure. We first need to uh, install the particular uh, like you no know, uh, command line uh, tool for the particular provider. Uh, so just to uh, like you no know, configure the infrastructure uh, uh, like you no know, related uh, uh, provider related uh, authentication details uh, into that particular uh, system basically. And uh, uh, for like you no know, for AWS there are multiple ways now being supported by Terraform. Uh, so I'll just show you them. Uh, so whenever we are planning to create a, a authentication for AWS, right? There are multiple ways we can uh, provide the authentication details uh, to Terraform now. Uh, in the earlier versions of Terraform, we have to explicitly define uh, the provider configuration and the path of the uh, authentication detail. But now Terraform by default understands it from the uh, mechanism that is uh, implemented by AWS. So first, it will look for uh, uh, authentication details in the parameters. And then it will look for authentication in the environment variables. Basically, the AWS authentication would be the secret key, access key, and if there are any tokens we needed, we needed to define for the particular session, right? So those kind of details we can get from our AWS account, and we can set those details in this one. And the third one is a shared credentials file, and there are few other methods mentioned. So for this demo purpose, I would be using the shared credentials mechanism in which I have installed the AWS CLI in my local uh, using the met method I mentioned here. So, so basically you can see here, right? So basically this is the 
a method to install AWS CLI command, and uh, we can use AWS uh, configure command to uh, de define our access key and secret key. Uh, since I have already added my access key and secret key, it is showing that value here. So whoever trying to create for the first time, it will not show any value here. They have to paste their access key first and then uh, secret key uh, next. And then these two values, they can provide their own, uh, for this value, they can provide their preferred region of uh, in which their, their resources needs to be deployed. And fourth one is the JSON uh, uh, like, no, format uh, or like uh, YAML format, whatever it is, we can define. So these are all some of the AWS configuration. And what happens when we do this, right? So these details will be written in the uh, AWS uh, file that is located in the home path, actually. So we can see here, right? So basically, it would be. Uh, So uh, whatever we are adding as a credentials, it will be added here. And what would be uh, we, uh, we are adding as a, a region and a JSON that would be added in the config details actually. So just to, to confirm, uh, I'll be doing my uh, like oh, just to, once after we configure this, we can just do a uh, check of like oh, whether it is working fine or not by doing AWS EC2 side instances. So since I don't have any instances in my AWS account, it is not showing anything. So this is just confirming that uh, this uh, AWS configuration works fine actually. So that is the first part of uh, like no, uh, like no second part of this uh, AWS configuration basically configuring the AWS credentials. So in this method, uh, I I'm, I have configured uh, AWS actually using AWS configure command and added my credentials. And then next is uh, like uh, uh, installation of uh, Terraform. Uh, so basically, uh, for that, uh, uh, so Terraform has an official documentation, and now it is supporting a packaged uh, kind of mechanism to uh, install our uh, Terraform code, basically, so that uh, we can just copy paste the command and install Terraform actually in our local. It is also having uh, RHCL, Fedora, Amazon Linux, and Homebrew, and a few other uh, like you no know, operating systems as well uh, to install. Since I'm using Linux, I have installed a Terraform and uh, uh, as part of like you know, uh, preparation of the demo and uh, it is also ready in my system uh, so all these details have been uh, i have documented clearly in this one so whoever wants to start with uh, exploring that uh, like not terraform they can use this uh, uh, readme file to understand more about it so that's about uh, terraform like you no know, uh, basic basic setup of uh, uh, aws configuration and uh, installation of terraform so so as i mentioned uh, once after install Terraform, if you type Terraform command, it will be showing that uh, what are all the commands basically, right? We can use it Terraform. And uh, I have installed the latest version 1.2.2. So that can be checked using the Terraform version command as well. So these are all the things like I was talking about, uh, like you know, knowing about uh, how to, uh, uh, knowing about the, each of the uh, subcommands of uh, Terraform. So, so this is about the like, no, installation of Terraform and uh, configuring AWS credentials. So any questions you can post in the uh, chat or like, no, in the Slack channel so that I can uh, like, no, see through later and I'll just reply to that. And uh, let's now jump on to creating the first uh, Terraform code actually. Uh, since I would, uh, as I mentioned, like Terraform has a detailed uh, documentation for everything. Uh, I would be like you no know, more or less referring to the uh, official documentation of Terraform to uh, create uh, my like you no know, whatever the demo part I'm going to try now. So basically, like as I mentioned earlier, uh, so basically for Terraform we would need a, a provider definition and uh, some of the basic components, right? So let's uh, kind of deep dive into defining those things. Okay. So what I'll do, I, I'll I'm planning to create one. Uh, directory now just for the demo purpose and uh, what i'm going to do i will be creating the uh, terraform uh, hcl file so the terraform hcl file would be called as uh, uh, main.tf actually so i would be creating that and uh, what i'll do i'll just open this in the uh, uh, vs code I will be creating a main file.
so i have created a main file so in so whoever wants to create the terraform uh, code right so they can just do a google search right so we are going to do a, a aws uh, terraform uh, like uh, implementation right so i'll just go through this uh, uh, search stream called aws terraform provider it will take us to the hashicorp's official aws documentation in which uh, it, we are kind of getting to know about how to implement terraform for terraform uh, version 13 and later and terraform 12 and later so so basically like no i would be since i have the latest version of terraform i would be using this so as you can see this definition has uh, like no terraform uh, required provider section and the provider section for aws right so i would be using it so basically we need a provider section to define our uh, uh, like no uh, deploy our cloud actually uh, like, no, uh, deploy our resources and then what i would be doing I would be doing it, taking an example of creating an EC2 instance, actually. Okay, so let's do a search on AWS Terraform EC2. It will take us to the documentation part of uh, uh, Terraform, like uh, Terraform's uh, AWS implementation. So in which uh, we have like you no know, uh, examples uh, being defined for defining our various uh, AWS infrastructure. So what I'm going to do, uh, I have already, uh, like, no, so, so if you wanted to use any of the examples, uh, having your, ha they are mentioned here, you can also uh, like, no, use this, uh, uh, code, uh, otherwise uh, I have kind of uh, defined a, a basic uh, code for uh, defining the AWS infrastructure, uh, in, uh, the mo workshop module. So I'll be using that code here, uh, so just to, to implement that, right? So. we are using ES S2 so I would be changing that ES S2 region and uh, then um, instance key name and all uh, I'm not going to define now so 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 this is the bare minimum uh, example uh, I can say for uh, like no creating the platform actually platform code so yeah let's run this uh, code now so as i mentioned we have provider and uh, resource definition has been uh, declared here and uh, let's run this code <coughs> so so I would be running this Terraform init command. So it would be downloading all the necessary packages <coughs> required for this uh, code to run actually. Uh, so it would be running, downloading them to my local. So yeah, so now it has been uh, like no, Terraform init command is uh, completed. So as you can see this init command shows, let me explain like no, what is getting showed in init command. So basically, like uh, Terraform. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, so while doing doing the init command, it will it would be initializing the Terraform backend actually in our local. Uh, basically, uh, that is a log.hcl file which contains the uh, uh, provider uh, uh, like no version locking and uh, every detail that would be available in this uh, uh, Terraform init command. Uh, sorry, uh, log file. So Terraform init would be initializing the backend uh, basically in our uh, uh, local. And uh, so it's a little bit advanced concept if I can talk about, there is also way to uh, keep the backend basically. So we can either to keep the Terraform uh, log file locally, or we can also store it in the uh, S3 kind of uh, uh, like you know, remote storage basically, in which, uh, in which time we have to use uh, Terraform backend as a remote uh, a remote actually. So so that's the kind of high level information I wanted to say here. But for our implementation, it is just initializing the backend in our local and downloading the necessary files it is needed for, for running the Terraform code actually. So it is creating a Terraform dot Terraform folder uh, 
and you can see like you know, it is downloading the terraform uh, package uh, provider package from hashicorp and uh, it is also like you no know, uh, uh, marking what are all the versions that is being locked in uh, that is getting created while doing the init command actually okay so that is about the uh, init command once after this init is done we can now see like what uh, do the plan command uh, to see uh, what happens so basically while doing the plan command it looks for the credentials and the authentication details of the respective provider and it will show us like you no know, what is the tentative infrastructure that is going to get created so so this is what actually it is getting showed actually uh, you can see like you no know, uh, our uh, uh, so our resource we are going to create is aws instance and the name uh, internally we have defined as sample ec2 and uh, what are all the values we defined for uh, like you know creating the infrastructure it we are kind of uh, like you no know, it is getting showed here that ami details and those kind of thing and it will also show as i mentioned earlier right so one resource going to get added actually so it is showing that one is added and uh, no zero change and zero dead destroy right so so that is what uh, uh, the tentative plan it is getting showed and then next we will try to apply this so now what are the tentative infrastructure it is it was showing right so it will be created in uh, the respective cloud account of, of mine right so that uh, it is now confirming that are you going to apply this uh, uh, like no uh, deployment or not so i would be typing s yes. now it will start spinning up the instance in the aws cloud account whatever i have so you can see like no the sample instance is getting created so now in the meantime i'll just go to that uh, aws console and i'll show you that that instance should be getting created here since it's it's getting created it is in the pending state so you can see the progress here in the uh, console itself that uh, what are the, what are the resources getting created so it will be showing that the progress in the uh, console uh, actually so now that uh, resource is added so you can see like you no know, apply is complete and there is one resource is added right so you can now see come and see that uh, like you no know, console that that uh resources added here okay so this is the very basic of uh, like no creating a aws infrastructure uh, like no in uh, like no terraform actually so let's uh, like no go through the code uh, like no whatever we had actually so yeah so yeah so this is the code we had so basically in our code we have defined provider terraform uh, sorry the provider aws and uh, we are uh, we are in, we are indicating the terraform core, like no package that it needs to be downloaded from the hashicorp uh, aws module and if, if if at all if there are like no custom provider uh, created by our own purpose then we have to source that particular provider name here and we have to provide the path of that particular provider uh, path in our own uh, github repository or whatever it is right and uh, we are mentioning that uh, that the minimum version of uh, this uh, provider should be uh, version 3 uh, and it should not be exceeding more than 3 actually so what it is doing is like no it is downloading the last package that was available in the version 3.75 that was uh, seen in the uh, cloud init uh, command actually sorry terraform init command and then um, uh, in the like no this provider part we are mentioning the region right and there is also few other variables like you no know, if if we are managing multiple uh, aws profiles right we can also have a variable uh, like you no know, definition uh, argument definition for pro profile and we can also provide uh, like you no know, the profile name so by the by default aws uh, have the profile name as default so if we wanted to uh, like you no know, indicate that uh, if it is something else right uh, so by default it will be creating the default provider one, uh, default uh, profile only but if you have multiple profiles for creating infrastructure like you no know, for production some other account or, or for various environments various profile in the sense then we have to mention the profile name accordingly here in this uh, profile 
uh, detail actually. Uh, so now uh, then we can we have this uh, resource definition uh, part part where we have this uh, AWS instance resource defined and then we have provided the AMI. So this is the Ubuntu AMI and we are also mentioning that what is the instance type for creating this uh, a, uh, instance actually. And then we are kind of uh, adding tags. Uh, and this is the user data section I was talking about, right? Um, in the particular part. So this script will be executed uh, whenever that VM gets created. Uh, so basically like, you no, know, I will also have a detailed example of like, you no, know, creating an Apache server, that is a kind of larger example uh, I have created for this demo. But whatever code I have showing here is uh, anyone wanted to start with AWS, they can simply have these three definitions just for their learning purpose and explore more on need according to that. Uh, they can add more resources for part of it. So for that, I can summarize that basically they would need a, uh, a like no AWS uh, credential uh, and AWS account access, and then they have to have a, a Terraform uh, CLA command installed on their local, and then they can use Terraform documentation uh, to have the basic uh, like no need of code, and then they can uh, uh, create infrastructure. And uh, Hashicorp also have a, a portal called learn.hashicorp.com. So these are all the details, more or less covered there uh, there also. But uh, I wanted to provide for us for beginners benefit i have i am sharing all these details actually so this is about like no high level and then uh, these are all the code blocks that is very, very basic for anyone just getting started with terraform actually so this is about it for the live demo part actually and then i will also uh, show you the other parts of code uh, i whatever i have created and uh, uh, let's also see like you know, what are all the other topics I, I'm planning to cover in this uh, demo part. Basically, like you know, we have covered like uh, writing the Terraform code in AWS. And uh, we also like you know, um, made a walkthrough of uh, creating an easy to example in our uh, like you know, live demo code. Right. So now uh, and then I have also showed you like you know, what are all what are all the commands that would be useful for uh, like no uh, getting started with uh, terraform right so terraform init command would be initializing the backend and uh, it would do the version locking in the lock file and then um, terraform plan would be showing the tentative infrastructure and what are all the changes destruction or like no additions that particular the code is uh, uh, made to use in the cloud provider and then terraform apply command will be actually applying that particular infrastructure on the uh, cloud so now i have added one change in this file basically i am i have added a uh, like no uh, profile argument here. So let's try to do a plan now again and see like no what it is showing. Let me do it here. So you can see that uh, uh, it is reading the state from the state file, Terraform state file and uh, and uh, it is mentioning that so since we haven't changed anything related to uh, infrastructure it is showing that no changes are made and uh, one part i uh, kind of missed to mention earlier was uh, after doing apply it is creating the state file right so as i explained in the introduction right introduction part it would be having the details of uh, details regarding all the uh, like no resources associated with this instance ID basically. It is also having the EBS volume ID. It is also having what is the VPC and subnet uh, this particular instance is getting uh, deployed onto. And it is using the state file to uh, kind of, uh, uh, like, no, um, using the state file for understanding what are the changes made in this infrastructure actually. So then, uh, we will try to destroy that infrastructure. Uh, so this is for since this is a kind of demo. Uh, we can also see like no, what what steps are involving in destroying an infrastructure. So so for destroy also it will be asking for uh, confirmation. So again, it would be using the Terraform uh, state file and uh, see what all the resources uh, that are associated with this particular run of Terraform uh, state and it will show that uh, changes. So it will be showing that plan one, 
plant it is it is showing that one would be destroyed actually so then we can confirm that yes then that particular instance whatever we created that will be destroyed <coughs> so we can now see in the console that that instance might be uh, terminated so it's now shutting down and uh, later it, it will be moved on to the terminated state actually so so anyone can post any questions related to that and uh, i will be answering at the end of the session uh, so yeah so since that uh, uh, in this infrastructure is getting destroyed the state file doesn't have anything now so that state would be moved into the backup uh, stage actually so and as i mentioned uh, uh, this state file also can be stored in the s3 right so basically the advantage of storing S, uh, terraform state file in the uh, s3 bucket is multiple developer environment right so basically there is a uh, situation that uh, multiple provider would be running uh, like you know, environment uh, creation right on the same code right so at that time this uh, lock and state file would be used to uh, uh, avoid that and it will indicate that that the infrastructure creation is already in progress actually so that's the reason like you no know, in a multiple developer environment uh, it is better to maintain the state in the uh, like you know, s3 packet or similar kind of uh, places so now that instance is getting uh, instance got terminated right so now let's move on to few other examples what i have def, uh, like you no know, uh, sorry what i have explained here uh, in this uh, deck so basically like you know, this is the uh, this is the examples i wanted to explore more so basically like i have a example for module modeling modularization as well as s3 and uh, one full example of creating an apache web server so let me show you that so as i mentioned earlier so this is the uh, terraform uh, like you no know, uh, demo uh, code i have created right and this is the same code i i tried to run, i try to run using this uh, live demo uh, like you no know, as well so 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 like as i mentioned earlier like you no know, uh, we are having a concept called uh, modules right so modules would be useful for uh, modularizing the code uh, or resource right and then uh, use the our in that example you have so whatever code i created as a easy to uh, share right uh, uh, sorry just before going on to modular say so the demo code very code in a uh, plain uh, main file right but uh, it would be recommended to kind of have a separate files uh, as per the terraform uh, best practices right so we need to keep this provider definitions in a uh, provider.tf and uh, a resource definition and those kind of definition in main.tf and similarly output definition in the so that kind of modularization we need to do when we are starting so since this is the demo i have written kind of created separate files just to show what all uh, needed for creating a basic perform file i have put, put everything in same file uh, but uh, in in my other example of uh, ec2 right i have kind of modularized everything like you no know, i have i have created separate files for each of the things actually so basically like you no know, main.tf only has the resource definition and the output i am kind of printing out the instance id as well as the public ip uh, whatever that is getting created right and then uh, provider.tf i would be having whatever what are all the provider definition i have had and then in variable you know, that is needed for uh, logging into the uh, uh, needed for S doing the ssh to the ubuntu instance and uh, the region we are mentioning actually so I, i'll just quickly try to apply this in the meantime actually so that uh, we will see that let's do a terraform init since i have already run this uh, terraform init earlier in my local 
it would be using that uh, terraform log file uh, in my local and uh, and it is showing that uh, terraform is initialized and uh, using the uh, reusing the previous version of uh, log file right so that's what it will show but for the first time it will download everything that is needed for running this and then i'll do a terraform plan so now it is showing that uh, what are all things are uh, you know tentatively created and i'll do a apply so one uh, quick uh, like no thing on the option part actually like no for terraform apply and destroy there is a option called auto approve actually and uh, there is a caution that it should not be used in production kind of environment right just to avoid the prompt of uh, having a s right uh, whenever we are running the apply command so for since this is a demo i am just adding the command for auto approving this right so that it will not ask for the prompt and it will start creating the infrastructure <coughs> so it started creating the infrastructure actually so let it let it uh, let it create the infrastructure and we will come back to that later and uh, let's move on to that modularization uh, like no example basically so what are what whatever the uh, uh, like no is it instance creation code i have created uh, for this demo right i have made that same code as a module here right and in this module it would be having the replication of the same files but uh, while defining that like no uh, using that uh, particular uh, creating the particular uh, resource what you have to do we have to define a similar structure like no main uh, like uh, provider and those kind of things since this is a demo those files are not uh, like no added in this uh, 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 demo code right and what i have do what i have done is like no we are calling that particular module using the uh, like no uh, block called module block actually in that module block we would be adding a uh, like no indicator name that this is this would be for the ec2 instances and in that particular module block we are we are kind of sourcing whatever the module we have created for creating ec2 instance right so we are creating uh, like no providing the module as a part like no path for that particular uh, uh, to get the code from there actually and then this module uh, needs a region as a variable right so we can pass that variable as well in this module so let's try to uh, like no apply this as well right so so the earlier example of that ec2 instance was completed uh the whatever the code i showed here right so and uh, yeah and, uh, and and it was printing the instance ip and the public ip so yeah so and now we are move on to that uh, module part actually so then yeah let me go to that uh, code and i'll do a terraform right here and uh, in uh, in this one you can see right it could be doing the initializing modules as well as initializing the ba back end right because module is the one containing the actual implementation of the code right so it would be uh, doing the initialization of that as well what i'll do for the demo purpose i'll just remove that uh, dot terraform implementation whatever that was uh, uh, created already right and then uh, i'll rerun that uh, terraform init command again so you can see right it is initializing the module ec2 instances and uh, that is available in the module directory and create instance uh, directory and then it is initializing the back end as i mentioned earlier the lock file will be created provider locking uh, the and it's now downloading the uh, necessary dot form uh, packages for, from the aws uh, hashicorp module now it is kind of initialized then we will run a uh, terraform plan so now it is showing that one uh, resource will be added here right so we will do a apply here again <coughs> so once after this is it, it is getting applied we'll just go to the code once again just for the purpose of uh, revisiting so now the module it is using the module code to create a ec2 instance right so that's what it is showing so as i mentioned so we are sourcing the module path here and using the module block in the main.tf and uh, it is uh, 
going to that create instance uh, module directory and use this uh, module uh, for creating instance actually so whatever the resource we are defining so we can have multiple modules and multiple mo module definitions uh, inside that so we can have uh, modules for vpc subnet and everything and uh, we can just call it multiple times so that the code redundancy would be avoided actually so that's the high level idea for this uh, module so it is now it is now created so we can now see in the console that uh, a particular instance would be created so since we have also run that other example of uh, ec2 right so it was also showing that and uh, so now that created instance is ending with d1f so this is the instance that was that was created now so this is about uh, like no high level on uh, how to convert our plain terraform code as modules actually so that is about uh, the terraform module and then <coughs> i was talking about uh, various sections like variables and stuff right so for that i have a sample code for uh, like no s3 bucket creation So, so this this code also like uh, uh, like most simple plain S3 packet code that was available in uh, Terraform uh, uh, like no uh, module definition uh, like no uh, in the Terraform documentation. So basically, we we would need uh, we would need to define uh, like no in main dot we would need to define a S3 packet uh, uh, like no resource and then we would be providing the bucket name. And then uh, S3 packet needing uh, ACL details, right? And then uh, we we have to define that as well. And then uh, we have to define the. Uh, it's not mandatory, but for for the purpose of uh, like no, uh, for the purpose of uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, like no demo purpose, I I have added this versioning block as well. So in this one also, like I have kind of created an output file in which. It will show the S3 bucket domain name and S3 bucket ID, and then uh, in provider section, uh, I have defined uh, like no what is the provider and uh, uh, what are, what is the minimum Terraform version required for this, and this required uh, this required version uh, helps to uh, like no keep uh, indicate the user that this is the minimum uh, like no uh, version of Terraform anyone ne needs to use actually, so that uh, that can be used, and then in variable section. We have this uh, region file. Yeah, seven. And there are so many yeah. questions. So maybe we can start taking one by one. Yeah, actually, I haven't completed it. Okay, but uh, okay. Then yeah. then let's complete and take it at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Just I just wanted to see that like you no know, uh, whether it's active or not so that's the reason i came back here oh, no you are in backstage yeah, yeah. we have a lot of yeah, yeah. questions no worries oh okay okay <laughs> okay okay only host you can see you are in the okay, backstage okay. but uh, okay. we have a lot of attendees around okay okay fine 500 to 600 attendees okay okay fine fine yeah just wanted to check actually because uh, it looks like i was only talking so <laughs> no no, <laughs> so no. i wanted to have a quick check on that okay so Thank you. yeah where i left uh, yeah so basically this um, s3 example i was running through right um, so, uh, so one catch here, right? Uh, the, we talked about uh, variables and uh, we talked about uh, output variables, right? In our, in my uh, high-level definition, I was showing about this uh, variables block, right? And uh, this, in this example, I have implemented something like a local variable mechanism, right? Uh, because in AWS Terraform, sorry, in AWS S3 bucket name should be unique. Uh, it should not be created anywhere else, right? So. What I'm doing in this code is basically I'm creating a random string and then and, and I'm attaching that string with the uh, S3 bucket name, right? So that uh, uh, that name should be unique to this implementation alone, right? So so that's the reason like I have defined a resource called random string. These are these, these are all some of the facility provided by Terraform. I think uh, that's uh, that's available from uh, later from that uh, version 13 only. It will not be available in earlier versions actually. So you can check in the Terraform documentation that in, from which version this uh, Terraform uh, like no, random string is available. So for making that string uh, uh, like no randomized and unique to our implementation, what I have done is I have created a local uh, uh, section of uh, block and in which I am defining the bucket name. And in that bucket name argument, I am passing that uh, like no some common string as sample S3 bucket because this is a demo kind of thing we are creating. 
and i am attaching the uh, like no i am adding that string uh, of particular random string that was getting uh, created using this uh, random string uh, resource actually so that uh, the s3 packet name would be so unique uh, for us actually so that's the idea for creating this uh, like no uh, local so this also shows the example of how we can make utilize of make utilizing the uh, facility of local variable in uh, terraform and that bucket name would be referred in the s3 bucket uh, resource as a local dot bucket name right so that's the high level and the, let's try to apply this uh, resource as well so we have covered so far like uh, cre creation of ec2 instance uh, from the scratch right using terraform documentation and uh, we have con co come across like what are all the basic components needed for that and then we have modularized the same ec2 instance uh, code uh, and use the mo module block to create the instance and now we are seeing uh, example of uh, like no local in the s3 bucket uh, code actually so now now i'll move to that s3 bucket <coughs> so yeah so now i will be kind of uh, doing the the usual procedure of running the terraform in it again like no since i have run it uh, run that terraform log file earlier it is using the same log file and uh, uh like now showing the message that reusing the log file and then run the terraform plan so it is showing that tentative uh, infrastructure created uh, what, what is what it is going to create now and then i'll do the apply <coughs> and i'll use the auto approve command as i mentioned earlier be cautious when using auto approve in apply and destroy on the real time environments so yeah since this is a demo code uh, demo purpose i am just uh, adding it so what it will do first it will do the random string creation right right and then um, it would be showing that so so now you can see right the terraform bucket so the s3 bucket name should not have the uh, other special characters it should have only dot and hyphens right so since uh, it is creating a random uh, alphanumeric characters right so it is showing that at uh, only uh, hyphens and characters are like no dots are allowed so what we need to do we need to change our code now right to uh, accept only that right so basically what i'll do i'll so these things can be explored in the documentation i'll show you that as well so we are making we are indicating that random string that there can be special characters in our uh, random string and we can we need to we can also specify what are all special characters that can be added in the uh, uh, string basically right so what i am doing as per the uh, s3 bucket naming convention only dots and hyphens are allowed so only i am giving that uh, special characters in the uh, s3 bucket uh, randomization name right so now i am i'm just saving this file and running the code <laughs> we'll just remove that state file because uh, the state file contains the string right so i'll just remove that and i'll read on it So now we can see that the randomization string created some random character, right? So that uh, uh, it doesn't contain uh, contain any other special characters, only the alphanumeric ones. So so that's the update we have done, and the S3 bucket started creating. Now we can see that uh, the S3 bucket is created, and uh, the bucket name is uh, sample, right? So let's uh, do a quick check on that S3 bucket using Terraform, uh, sorry, AWS S3 CLA command actually. So I'll be just prepping it for the name. So 
So it is having that uh, S3 bucket created uh, in our uh, AWS account, right? So I'll just quickly run through this example once again. Basically, like uh, in this example, we have created an S3 bucket uh, resource uh, in AWS account. And uh, we have defined various other resources as well, like uh, uh, that are needed for creating S3 bucket. So uh, in this one, we have ACLs and uh, versioning also defined uh, as a resources. And for S3 bucket name, uh, we made we made the use of a local uh, variable in uh, like you know, Terraform, and then we have created uh, the uh, like you know, uh, random string uh, uh, like you know, mechanism to create the string, and then we have created the bucket using that. Right, so this is the high level about uh, like you know, using the locals in the Terraform file, and it is also showing the example of uh, uh, like you know, how it is uh, like you know, changing things. And uh, one other thing I wanted to show now is like quickly is a, is the what what happens when we do a change, right? So I'll just change the string to disabled, like you know, the versioning string as disabled, right? And then we will try to see like what happens now. So I'll run the Terraform plan once again. And it will show that uh, one of the resource gets changed now. That is actually the versioning uh, uh, resource. So the name should be something else. So what we'll do, we'll just quickly refer the documentation for AWS S3, right? AWS Terraform S3 versioning, right? <coughs> so this is how like whoever wants to create work on Terraform, if they are any facing any error, documentation should be the first place they have, they have to refer, right? So how to refer the documentation is basically, <coughs> I will also cover that as well. Uh, so we have this example usage, right? In which one, in which we it will be showing that example of particular block actually. And then uh, there are various things like argument reference and attribute reference. So argument reference are the one that needs to be added inside that uh, particular uh, uh, resource. And then attribute reference is some of the outputs that is getting uh, out of the uh, particular uh, resource actually. So for versioning, uh, basically we'll just uh, check for status. Okay, so for that we have to uh, recreate the entire resource it seems. So, so let's move on to like you no know, uh, changing the uh, like you no know, S3 bucket ACL actually, so that uh, at least I can show the uh, which one like you no know, that uh, change basically like what happens when we are changing the environment, right? So just quickly I'll. One minute, one minute, just give me a moment.
sorry for this basically yeah sorry sorry for this yeah, so basically what i'll do i'll just remove this <coughs> uh, acl itself actually because that's an optional parameter for the for the purpose of demo so that uh, we'll see like what happens now because as per the documentation that uh, aws uh, s3 packet acl option you know that uh, argument is an optional one so we'll just uh, try to uh, like you know change that We'll try to apply now. So it is showing that, uh, like, uh, anyway, that's by default a private uh, bucket, right? So, so the default for S3 is a uh, private one. So I think uh, it will not, uh, like, uh, show any further changes. I think so. Let's see that. So one change it is showing now, right? As part of plan, it, uh, it is showing that one is uh, to change. So let's do that. <clears throat> so this is the uh, plan it will show whenever there is a change in the particular infrastructure right so in our case it is going to change this acl uh, configuration so it is showing that only is getting changed actually okay so i think uh, some of the uh, things are required in uh, uh, s3 packet it seems so i think we'll we'll keep that as a like no separate thing and uh, I'll show you some other example for like you know, the changing environment, but basically like this is how it will show whenever uh, like you know, there is a change in the environment actually. So that's what and then it will apply. And then the next example I wanted to show was uh, uh, that, uh, that the larger example of that creating an Apache server. Okay, so this is a kind of end-to-end -end, uh, example of creating a VPC subnet, uh, and then it is also having an example of uh, like no uh, creating a. Uh, Apache server while doing the uh, creating server instance itself basically so that uh, uh, like, no, it will uh, it will be like no, demoed actually so that uh, it will try to apply that quickly okay so let me go to that example of uh, like no, showing that uh, particular um, Apache server example And uh, for this one, like no, for uh, this kind of uh, uh, implementation, I have added a detailed documentation as well uh, in the uh, workshop module, so that you guys can have a look into that and uh, uh, kind of uh, like, no, uh, make use of that documentation and know more about the code actually. Okay, and uh, so what I'll do, I'll just destroy the terror, like no, the S3 buckets I created. Go to that uh, example of uh... <laughs> so this is the code actually AWS uh, TF code is the example in which you can see like various uh, uh, modules I have defined uh, actually so basically like you no know, in main dot TF I have uh, I'll show you here actually AWS In this one, you can see like no, we have uh, defined uh, the complete uh, network uh, like no, that is required for spinning up a VM, right? So we have defined AWS VPC 
and then internet gateway for providing the internet access and then public subnet uh, that is allocated inside the vpc and then a uh, route table for that particular uh, uh, like a vpc and the internet gateway and then we are associating the route table with the subnet actually and then we are coming to the part where we are defining the uh, infrastructure uh, for like you know, for creating the uh, uh, instance basically in this one i have my ami defined instance type defined and uh, instance key name also defined and i am also associating the subnet id that that i have created in the above definition and then i am also associating the security groups as well so security group is uh, uh, nowadays by default uh, aws doesn't allow uh, like no public uh, like no uh, user access to ssh or uh, outer world internet actually so for that we have to have a special uh, security groups needs to be created for uh, allowing the ssh and uh, http access so basically uh, what i have done is i have created a security group file separately for defining the ssh access and uh, http access for the particular instance via the subnet uh, uh, for via the vpc security groups so you can see like you know that uh, uh, inbound is ingress and i have defined uh, ssh 22 connection and uh, uh, ingrained uh, in, inbound uh, like http 80 also allowed and uh, for outbound i am allowing all traffic actually so this is the security group i have defined let's quickly apply this code and i and we can see what happens. So Terraform. Plan. So basically, in this example, I made use of uh, variables file in which I am kind of customizing various inputs I, I wanted to uh, you know, pass in, into the uh, uh, particular infrastructure creation so predominantly majority of things are uh, kind of uh, uh, like no uh, can be used but uh, only this key name variable right i have added using the tf var style so this is the tf var implementation initially i was talking about uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the in the introduction part right we can customize our own uh, like no, variables and uh, we can uh, use this variable file alone to pass the customized variable inside our Terraform uh, code actually. So for that, uh, I am what I am doing while applying the code, I need to pass the option called var file in which I need to give the path of this variable file actually, aws.tfvars, in which it contains all the uh, necessary variables, customized variables that is needed for this infrastructure creation. Now I am applying this. So it will be using all the uh, like no variables that is needed for uh, uh, creating this infrastructure using the TFRs. <coughs> Since the lack of time, uh, I couldn't uh, like no show the change of uh, like my S3 bucket uh, options actually because that needs some. Uh, like no exploration of options uh, s3 packet uh, command creation so basically like that's the reason whenever we need to create uh, infrastructure we need to keep ready with all our uh, uh, like no changes or definition that is needed to be created for defining or changing the infrastructure so that uh, we can avoid this kind of error and even if there is an error then we can explore the perform documentation for fixing those errors actually so now you can see in this web, uh, web server example it is started creating all the code in the meantime, I'll show you that what is available in the uh, uh, main.tf, right? As I was explaining, like it has VPC, internet gateway, subnet, and all the definitions. In the instance definition, you can see that uh, I have defined the user data section, right? Uh, in the user data section, even though it accepts uh, shell scripting and uh, for Windows kind of systems, it accepts PowerShell, right? Uh, that is a kind of AWS implementation that is uh, that is made use in the a Terraform implementation here, in which I am kind of installing the Apache simple Apache server uh, using a four line of, four lines of uh, shell script actually. So what happens right whenever this instance is getting created, this script will be executed and it will be um, kind of uh, showed. Uh, uh, it will be having the Apache installation done whenever the system is ready for accessing right. So now we can see that uh, this instance is uh, created now. What I'm going to do now is, I'm going to show that 
this script should be should have been executed inside the instance that got created right so since i have configured a, a vpc subnet and uh, using my uh, instance uh, accessing key right that's a pem file we need to provide what i'll do i'll just just do the ssh and uh, i'll do the <laughs> and this is a ubuntu server so i am using ubuntu username this might be felt too heavy for some beginners but uh, whenever you are planning to create a uh, uh, like no uh, instance or like no resource creation you can just refer whatever i have uh, like no explained in this session so that it would be easy for you to learn more on this right so basically this session as i told earlier can be used as a basic thing to start learning as a beginner for uh, creating terraform uh, code actually so since uh, it's asking for that uh, adding that known host i'll be adding it so now it will be going into my vm that got created right so this is a vm that got created and uh, it is in, we are inside the vm so as i told earlier it was creating a it was running a script set of scripts right uh, whenever the vm is created so that can be checked in the cloud init log that would be available in the slash var log path actually so this is just to show that this uh, user data has been executed successfully right so this is the user data file and uh, it is uh, having a set of instructions right so you can see here right so we are we have given that uh, given the command of insert yeah. apache 2 that you can see it here so it means that it runs this cloud uh, like no user data section and uh, run the script right for accessing this uh, for installing the apache inside the instance so so this is the kind of uh, example that uh, that shows that uh, we can also use make, make use of this uh, user data user data section to um, spin up uh, like you no know, whatever the be beginning command that needs to be installed in the vms actually and uh, now i will also show the apache server that got created uh, using this uh, server So since this is a public IP, we would be able to access it. So this is the sample, right? So this is the Apache's uh, default page that comes from the slash var log slash slash var www dot path actually. And uh, so this is a kind of uh, like you no know, full level example that shows how to create a uh, end-to-end uh, instance uh, like you know, with all the networking and stuff actually. So this is the uh, high level I wanted to cover. And uh, there are a few other slides I wanted to quickly run through. So we are, we are pretty much done with the demo part actually. And uh, on a high level, these are the best practices, right? Uh, use the Terraform var files example I showed you for customizing, uh, for sending the customized variable. And the version control the Terraform state file for uh, like no uh, reverting back to the earlier versions or like no for roll for for, for rollback, and the managing the S3 that is for the multiple developer environment right TF state files so, so that uh, it uh, it can be avoid uh, like no for multiple runs of the same crop, and then uh, retrieve the state metadata from remote backend right so that is also similar to that, and uh, use shared module and isolate environment using. Uh, variables and modules actually so these are some of the best practices and in this deck also i have provided a kind of a github reference for this particular best practice github page yeah and we are pretty much covered everything and that's it hope this session might be might have been useful for people who are getting started with terraform right